Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I wanted to do a little experiment today, so I drove out to a wildlife area. I'm going to try to activate this park today on FT8 with my ham radio, but I'm going to use a different style antenna today. On the last video that I did, you saw I had that truck mount for, that's meant to mount on the bracket of a mirror for a CB antenna, and we hooked a 20 meter ham stick to that in the video. Well, I met a guy this weekend at Hamvention, a young man, and his radio, or his channel, excuse me, on YouTube is Ham Radio Dude. And to support him, I went and looked at some of his videos after I met him on, I think it was Sunday afternoon, I was looking at the videos. And he had the same exact mount in a video, and he basically just took a long gutter spike or a tent stake and tightened it in this bracket and then pounded that in the ground. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty ingenious way to carry something fairly small with you that you can use to mount one of these antennas on. You can even put this in your go bag so you have it just in case you want to walk away from the vehicle and just grab a ham stick and carry it with you. What I thought we'd do today is instead of using a gutter spike, because I think that a long nail or tent stake like that here in Ohio might not quite have the stability you want in some of this looser soil, but it may be okay anyway. But I thought what we would do is we'd do a little bushcrafty thing and we would make a wooden stake and attach to a longer wooden stake, something about two, two and a half feet long. Drive that in the ground and put our antenna mount on that directly and then hook an antenna up to this dude, put a counterpoise on it, see what kind of SWR we can get, see if we can activate this part. So stay with me. And we'll talk through it, guys. All right, so now that we've made ourselves a nice pointy stick here, we're going to go ahead and begin to lock this down to the stake. And I want to drop this thing down just a little bit so that there's no chance of me hitting this SR239 connector when I'm pounding the stake in. So I'm going to drop it just a little bit below everything. So I've got a step there. Okay, so I've hooked that to the stake. And then I have just unscrewed these two pieces here right below this washer and below the mount and I've stuck a piece of counterpoise in there about six feet long and we can lay out on the ground which should be quarter wave at 20 meters and it should be enough for us multiple counterpoises would be better but I think one will work for this experiment we'll find out okay so we've pounded that dude in on our wooden stake hooked a piece of coax to it going back to the truck to our radio and we've got a counterpoise laid out on the ground off in that direction. And we've got our 20 meter ham stick on here. Let's see what happens. Okay, our SWR is sitting at 1.32. And so what I did was I took that piece that I pre-cut off and I put a piece, I just attached a strip wire to the mount there for ground. And I attached that to a large spool of counterpoise wire and just started reeling it out a little at a time, unfolding it one layer at a time and going back and checking the SWR meter until I got below 1.5. And so that's an easy way for changing sticks and things like that on this from 20 to 40 to whatever. You can just carry a larger roll of counterpoise and go with that. Now, what I'll probably do is make a permanent, permanent uh, connection right there of some kind where I can just screw an eye connection on there and solder it together. So I can just stick it on there and then roll the counterpoise out from that. And not have to worry about wrapping wire around the screw. And one thing I did do was I put a piece of orange electrical tape right there at the spot where that counterpoise is perfect on that 20 meter stick. So the next time I just need to roll it out to that orange, drop the wad there and go. All right, I tried to wipe some of the dirt off the screen. I am outdoors, guys, so my stuff gets dirty. But you can see, I've got a lot of people picking up my signal all over the U.S. And not only that, but I'm picking up signals from overseas as well. Wales, Canada, Switzerland, England. So, talked to a couple guys already. This antenna setup's killing it. Okay, guys. Well, we didn't get enough contacts to activate the park before I have to leave here. But we did get four or five contacts, something like that. And... Saw a lot of people. Signal report looked really, really good. People seeing that we're out here. So I think we're getting pretty good propagation off an antenna that may not be optimal as far as ham radio goes. But again, when you're talking digital modes, 
you've got that ability to squeeze in there with very low wattage and not a great signal and get to people that you wouldn't normally get to trying to talk voice. And that would work the same as far as Vera and things like that, where you can actually send digital emails, digital messages, all of that stuff would work with an antenna like this. As long as you get your SWR right, get in a good location, I think it's a good bet. We're going to take it out to the school. We're going to try it in a different location on high. All right, so down here at the school, classroom area, I just stuck a stake in a stump over there and attached that antenna to it. Just a metal stake. Same counterpoise, same length to the orange. SWR 1.53. Look at this, man. I'm popping it all over the world right now. But you can see that 20 meter antenna is busting it from this clearing right here at the school. Just on that little versatile $10 mount with a ham stick. There's my signal going across the pond into Italy. So what we're doing now is we're connecting to Vera for email. This is completely digital, no internet connection whatsoever, all radio. And I'm connecting to another station to check my email in WinLink. Again, no internet required. You can see I'm connected. It tells you the station I'm connected to. My call sign. And now it's going to check my email. Okay, so I'm connecting again through Vera. And I'm sending myself an email on Gmail with my radio, without satellite, without cell phone. So it looks like we're connected again. And the email should be sending. So we'll close this screen, open the WinLink screen so you can see that. So well, here's the email I sent myself for my call sign. Just Vera 20 meter test. We'll see if that comes up in my email here in a few minutes on my phone. It says it is currently sending that message. And when it disconnects, we'll check our email. All right, it says it's completed sending that message. One message sent, how many bytes the message was and how long it took to send that message. Two minutes and 32 seconds to send that simple message, but it's sent. So now it should be in my email. Okay, guys, like I said, I just came out here to the classroom area, punched that thing down into a stump hole, ran the counterpoise out right to the orange marker. SWR was good. Started transmitting digital and even sent an email to myself through Vera with no internet, no satellites, with a simple, simple antenna like this. Again, that's a $10 mount, a piece of steel I had in the forge, <laughs> so that didn't cost me much. And then whatever that ham stick cost me when I bought it, I can't remember, and a piece of coax. And I can communicate worldwide and send email, text, all those types of things with this setup from anywhere. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me for this video today. I encourage you to check out guys like this Ham Radio Dudes channel who are young and up and coming in ham radio and give all these new guys starting these YouTube channels in the survival genre, bushcraft genre, ham radio, all that stuff. Give all these guys a look. Give them a listen. Give them a subscription. Hit their notification bell. You know, Take care of these guys because they're making content for the most part for free like I've been doing for pretty much 15 years now. And I know that I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I appreciate everything you guys have done for me over the years. So I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.